Hey, what's up, podcast listeners? Welcome back to the Tom Wayne Show. It's been a minute since the last time I had posted. I'm more active now on Instagram as well as YouTube. So if you like those two platforms, Instagram, I'm sharing really just my moments of my life. Uh, I do have a life. I don't just spend every single waking hour working. Um, you know, so if you want to follow kind of behind the scenes of uh, um, my life, if you care about that at all, uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram. Just type in T O M, so Tom D O T dot C O M, so Tom dot com, spelled out dot I G. Uh, it's the period I G, and uh, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. I post multiple times daily. And I've been posting a lot on YouTube.、Uh, I've been posting quite a bit on YouTube here.、Um, a lot of strategic things about Amazon FBA mindset, entrepreneurial stuff, vlogs, yada yada, all that type of stuff. So right now I'm incredibly busy with a few projects and launching some new brands, launching some new companies, reviving some brands, and so on and so forth. And taking the time to actually, you know, do podcast is, I have to say, it's been on the very very low end of my priority list. So. So much going on. I think I'm just gonna focus a little bit more on YouTube, which is my preferred platform. So、um, this is not to say I'm never gonna launch another podcast episode. I am here to say that、um, it's probably not gonna be as frequent as some of you want. But whenever I do drop a episode like this, you can bet on your bet on my life that it's gonna be a bomb bomb episode. So what are we gonna be talking about today? Well, I invited one of my good friends. His name is AJ Patel. And he is a multiple eight nine figure whatever number you want to put on this guy. This guy is absolutely insane. Okay, he's built over like five different physical product brands, and every single one of them have done super super well. And this guy, I honestly, if I were to build a you know a D two C brand or a physical product brand, if I want、uh, a partner or、uh, someone on my advisory board, for sure, this guy hands down will be one of them. Okay, hands down. So. Um, in every single industry, there's someone who's really, really good at their craft and their skills, and this guy's definitely one of them. So, without kind of, you know, boosting up, and if he's listening to this, it's like, okay, like, calm down, Tom.、Uh, so, I, I got an opportunity to actually interview him, and and we talked a lot about, you know, his launch strategy.、Um, how does he pick which niche to go after, which market to go after? How does he prove out product market fit? How does he build a team so that he can actually take himself out of the business and move on to the next? Uh, a business, and he's launching multiple businesses right now. So, this guy is a serial entrepreneur. He's very good at what he does, and I think you guys are gonna learn a crap load of high-level content from this episode. So, sit back, listen, take notes, and enjoy this episode of the Tom Wayne Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is happening today? I have a interview with my friend AJ Patel. AJ, what is happening, my friend? Hey Tom, everything's well. Thanks for thanks for having me. Of course, it's an honor and a privilege <laughs> to have someone like you on. So AJ,、it. for someone who doesn't know who you are, why don't you just give everybody a quick one minute, two minute introduction of your upcoming, your your where you're from, what you do, and then we'll dive into kind of、uh, the the juicy part of this conversation. Sure. So I started as an on well as an entrepreneur, fifteen, sixteen years, right, hustling. And doing everything that a young and upcoming entrepreneur does. Had stuff in high school, college.、Um, took a couple of years off after college and decided to,、um, you know, figure myself out, whatever that meant. And long story short, went broke and decided to utilize my degree in finance. Got a job, and then 2000, end of 2013 is when I stumbled upon how to sell on Amazon.、Um, started with my first brand, then since the skincare category, you know, launched the first product. And within two weeks, it was doing thousand dollars a day. So I knew after you know ten years of failures, I knew I was onto something. So went all in, put it, put put forty thousand on my credit cards, and you know, rest is history. No, just kidding. But I started you know from from the cash flow of that that business, well, grew it size,、uh, grew it to a pretty sizable amount. I started four other companies,、um, and all in different categories, right? So health and wellness,、um, men's grooming, home auto, boat cleaning. And something else, oh, pet supplements,、yeah. um, and then most recently, I've started a food and beverage brand,、um, so focused on that. So they're all essentially、uh, physical products, and out of out of out of those five products, what would you say like the easiest? Because、uh, because the market is really important. Like for example, what I mean by that is like right now, you want to launch like a 
like a skincare brand. It's going to be much harder it, than, than, than it was back in 2013. The, com- the, the market is a little bit more savvy and, and, and concentrated. What would you say, like, um, out of those five brands, out of those five markets, because they're all in different markets, which one do you think right now in 2020 for the listeners is the best market to get into? You know, that's a really good question because to your point, if you look at supplements and beauty, you know, it is saturated, right? Obviously, if you have something unique and you have a tiger by its tail, you can still create momentum. Um, but I would say if you're looking at an opportunity to launch a business, you've got to find a white space and ideally something that is not easy to replicate. So, you know, the food business as an example is, is perfect, right? It's so hard to create products that we make. Um, and it takes six to 12 months minimum uh, and a lot of talent and resources behind to, to do that, right? So if you can find, find some, um, you know, high barriers of entry and create a brand around that, and Amazon could be just a launching pad, right? There's different ways to launch it nowadays, you know, whether it's DDC, uh, using influencers or whatnot, or content marketing, right? So, but the main thing is identify a niche that's <clears throat> not easy to replicate. Right. For sure. So, uh, okay. So I want to talk about, you know, the other four brands, we don't need to talk too much about them. Uh, You've done very, very well with all those brands. It's fair to say, I think most of them are eight figure plus uh, in terms of revenue wise. Um, What let's talk about your newest brand, which is called high key. Uh, It is talk to us about high key. What is it? Um, Yeah. What, what is high key? So I was on a low carb diet a few years ago. Um, and I have a sweet tooth, so I was really frustrated by, you know, what was in the market. Um, and I kind of saw, based on the experience I've had creating uh, five other companies, I was like, hey, you know, uh, basically, fuck this. I can solve this problem myself, right? So I decided to enter a new category and said, you know, I, I, I like the cookies. Uh, I love cookies at the time. And I was like, there's no good cookies. So let me go solve that first. So it just started from, from my own needs and desire, right? Trying to solve my own problem, um, as well as kind of uh, marrying that with the opportunity at hand. You know, at that time, I mean, keto was exploding, still is. But really, what we're about is low carb, low sugar comfort foods, right? That taste as good as the original. Yeah, but you don't have any experience in terms of like, like a food scientist. You don't, you, you, you're, you're not cooking these cookies from your kitchen. Uh, you don't have the ingredients and, and so on and so forth. So how does one without any sort of that experience go about actually creating the actual product itself? How, how, do, how do you go about doing even like doing that? Yeah, no, very good point. For, for me, I got fortunate enough to, you know, meet this guy who uh, called John, um, who is really, you know, a great inventor, food inventor, right? So he's innovating products for uh, the big CPGs of the world. And, you know, we talked um, got to know him really well. And I, I basically thought to myself, this guy is it. This is mm-hmm. the guy is going to solve the problem that I can't solve for myself, right? And we basically uh, sold him on the vision. And thankfully, he decided to join the, join the ship. And that's how we do it. So he focuses on R&D. Uh, and we have a full team around him. And, and, you know, I focus on the marketing side. Got it. And what he, is he equity partner? Like, yep. or... Got he's, it. A, he's a true co-founder. Got it. Got it. Awesome. So in terms of, okay, so you, you, you launch a product that solves your own need and, and it's really interesting because I think as entrepreneurs, like I like to experience, I like to experience a lot of things. Like, for example, I just, I, I told you, I just got a puppy. Right. And before I didn't have a puppy, I was not exposed to the pet space. I mean, I had a cat, but, uh, cats are pretty self-sustaining, right? <laughs> like you can leave them by themselves at home for like two or three days. Like they'll be fine. Uh, with a dog, you got to walk them and there's so much more stuff you got to buy for dogs. And one of the interesting things that I experience as a dog owner, and maybe you can relate is I want my dog to have the best life, right? Uh, healthy, and all these different things. And obviously one of the most important things when it comes to health is nutrition. So I wanted to see what type of diet works best for my dog. Uh, as human beings, you know, there's so many different types of diets and each of those diets you eat low carb, you got your paleo, you got all that different st- stuff. But what is the type of diet that works best for my type of dog breed? 
I couldn't actually find out that answer. And even if I did, there were so many different types of answers. I went to my vet. My vet's like, "Hey, you should um uh put put him on a fish diet. So like a lot of fish kibble." I'm like, "Oh, what about raw food?" Right? They're like, "Oh, no, don't do raw food. It's not good for the stomach." And then I go to like some other guy who's like another vet. I'm like, and he's and he's like, "Well, just read the back of the kibble um ingredient, and you tell me if you would eat that." And I went home and I looked at it, and I couldn't. Understand eighty percent of the ingredients. So as a, as a, as a new puppy owner, I find that market very very fascinating, because I think a lot of people can. It's not just a dog; it's like a family member. It's like my son now, right? So I want to make sure that he he um has the best nutrition. But to your point, you create a high key out of personal frustration, and you're like, "Fuck this! I can do this myself," which is such an entrepreneurial thing to say because I'm like now, you know, um. Hey, I can probably create something similar. Like this is a gap in the marketplace. Yep. You know? No, I totally agree.、Um, and it starts. It stems from kind of your own problem, right? Like, hey, you experience a an issue, and you're like, <laughs> if if it's hard for me, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard for other people, right? And there's a need. So I I definitely agree with you. And you know the category you mentioned. I mean, I'm, I it's it's. Definitely attractive. The only thing about about food in that category, in the pet category, is like really expensive.、Mm. In terms of like shelving, shipping, fulfillment,、yeah. all that type of stuff, right? Low margin kind of、mm. business, right? So you have to you have to have a little bit of capital behind you. Fair enough. Actually, I want to talk to、uh, one quick question about your pet supplement brand.、Uh, I know they're going through some stuff right now with it、uh, in a good way, and we're not going to talk too much about that. But how did you actually create the formulation for for the、uh, your pet supplement brand? Um, it was in collaboration with with the co-man, and we also had like R and D people,、um, uh-huh. in term, like consultants that we had we had hired, right? So we brought、mm. brought in external resources and internal resources, and then you know worked together with the co-man. Got it, got it. So it wasn't like a white label product from、yeah. one of these manufacturers. And and you know what we're doing in that space is is really innovative, right? We're the first first brand that brought、uh, branded ingredients to the forefront within the pet supplement space. Sorry, what ingredients? Branded ingredients that you can find in hu- help you human supplements. So well recognized ingredients, you know, trademarked and and have brand recognition. Got it. Got it. No, super cool. So back to high key.、Um, you had this idea, right? The next part is about actually creating the product. After you created the product, then you kind of start moving into, I guess,、um, the branding phase.、Um, You had mentioned to me before that you know you just paid someone like six figures to figure out the branding side,、uh, so we don't have to talk too much about that. But what I really want to focus on, and this is again out of my personal interest, is talk to me about. Okay, this is all ready to go, right? We got our product, we got our branding, we got our co-packer, we got everything ready to go. Like what now? Like, do you create a website and start driving Facebook ads? Do you reach out to influencers? I want to understand kind of your launch strategy. From an overall perspective, for high key,、um, and then we, you're talking about when we first first launched initially. Yeah, initially. Initially, it was just about getting proof of concept, right? Like I didn't want to go all in、mm. without validating kind of the category or the thesis that we were on.、Mm. So、um, obviously, we had the website, the social handles, and the whole nine yards.、Uh, the foundation was there, and then we, you know, just launched it on Amazon.、Um, January of 2019, probably is is kind of like. Um, you know when we really went live, and then you know we saw almost immediate immediate traction, and then when we launched the cookies two or three months later, you know we I mean yeah, I saw something that I've never seen before in terms of a product picking up so fast. So what、mm. we realized is we kind of met an unmet demand. Of,、mm. You know there was a lot of demand and just not anyone supplying, right? So、um, kind of and, and that that's when we realized after a couple of months after that that we. We were onto something, and that's when really I decided to go all in. Interesting. So you use Amazon as a launch pad because I presume like you're most familiar with Amazon over the past like ten years of doing it,、uh, and you use Amazon as a way to actually validate if the demand is there or not. Yep. So obviously, it depends on the category and the brand, right? Like this one was conducive to to that platform, right?、Um, And you know, as I look at other other brands or opportunities these days, you know, DDC is top of mind as well, especially if it requires a little bit of education. In this case, 
you know, searching for a keto cookie as an example, doesn't mm. require, you know, there's already demand for that. Right. So once you saw sales picking up, uh, the first two, three months, you said you saw something you've never seen before. So I assume you're just comparing this to your other brands that you launched on Amazon. I, like, what would you uh, give us a, like a rough idea? Was it like double of, uh, of all the other brands, triple, like what is, what is the, Honestly, I don't, I don't have the exact scale, relatively speaking, but I would say the momentum we generated, you know, um, in terms of number of units we were moving on a daily basis. And it happened like within weeks, you know, mm. and then every month it was kind of compounding. Mm. So I was just surprised by how quickly kind of it, it picked up. And again, it goes to goes back to, you know, we, we found we've solved a need um, that hadn't been solved before. Right. And what, like, what's your lead time for these food, these food products typically? Uh, usually, usually in food and bed, you're going to find, um, depends, but six to eight weeks. Six. Okay. So not terribly long. So, you know, when you first test out this product, like how many orders, how many units do you even order to test out the proof of concept? Depends on the cone, man. Usually, um, usually it's, it's pretty heavy. Um, mm. So, you know, thankfully I had some capital behind me from my other, other ventures. So I was able to take a little bit of an outsized risk. I mean, I put more money in this brand before even the proof of concept was established than any other company I started. So, you know, I put, I put a lot on the line for this and, you know, there was, there was a moment early on when I thought basically I was going to lose it all. Right. So I had that, had that. When was that moment? How, how did you, um, probably around like really, you know, the first few months where, you know, the, the amount of money that we, I had put in uh, relative to the scale. And there are some other issues that, that we were facing as well. Um, you know, I just thought I had, I had made a mistake. Thankfully, mm-hmm. you know, still continued despite that. And, and it worked out. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, even someone on your caliber who's done this over and over and over again, who has a proven repeatable process, process still had doubts like that. And that's the same doubt that a brand new person who just get into their business the first time, it's the same uh, type of doubt. But I think over a period of time, you know, you, you know how to manage that the doubt and then you just keep going regardless, which you did. Um, it gets, it, I would say it does get easier. Uh, it, it, I remember building, you know, my first business and, and, and at the very beginning, especially when you're working a nine to five job and stuff like that, it's, it's hard, man. It's like, you, you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's the hard part, right? Like there's no belief, there's no faith, but um, you just got to get through that. And then as you, as you, as you've done it once, you're like, okay, this is not a, this is not a scam. Like businesses are real. I can do this again. So yeah. um, cool. So once you prove out your uh, proof of concept on Amazon, can you t- share with us a little bit more about how, cause I, you know, I went on your website, obviously it's a beautiful, beautiful website. But more than that, like your SEO game is, is incredibly strong on the website. Um, what are some of the pillars of marketing that, so there's SEO, SEM, content marketing, influence marketing, Amazon, Facebook ads. There's so many different ways to do marketing now. Can you talk to us about some of the pillars that you utilized for high key specifically? Yeah, so you know, once, once we got proof of concept, uh, one thing I wanted to do was kind of make sure that this was an omni-channel brand from get-go. Um, so, you know, we, I wanted to solve DDC and I wanted to solve retail. So those high level, right? Amazon, DDC, and retail are the three channels. And basically we didn't have the capabilities in house for those two at that time, like really early days. And so I decided to basically figure out how do we, how do we get the talent, right? So. Uh, we recruited for the for the co CEO and my partner now, who is you know in charge of uh, basically um, little general management because it's stuff that I'm not that passionate about some of the day to day blocking and tackling as well as um, he's he's responsible and accountable for you know the retail side of things right mm-hmm. and then the BDC again um, just went on LinkedIn and and did some stalking and also activated a search and thankfully found someone, brought them onto the team and we were able to build out those, the, the teams over there. And then it's just a, from, from there, like take website, for example, right? Content marketing that you mentioned, um, influencer strategy, all of those are obviously part, part of the 
overall strategy to support those channels, right? So influencer marketing supports all three. Uh, content marketing is, as you said, for SEO. So we've, did, we've you know, invested a lot in, in content uh, such as blogs as well as recipes, right? So giving value mm -hmm. to our community and our users and making sure that, you know, we're, we're there for them as a resource when they need us. Mm -hmm. For I'm curious about the SEO part. Do you do that in-house or is that outsourced to an agency? I believe we use an agency. Got it. Got it. And then, so it seems like, you know, there, there's obviously, I think for company leaders, you, you have to know your strengths and weaknesses. Um, strength, you double down on weaknesses, you delegate. So you had mentioned that you basically delegated a couple of roles, right? Uh, one of them is essentially the operator who manages the day-to-day -day stuff. And yep. then the other one is a D2C guy. Is that correct? Uh, sure. Yep. Sure. So, um, Co, you know, we have a co-CEO, right? So what's interesting about us, we're truly like co-CEOs. You know, he, he operates in his lane and he trusts me to operate in my lane, which is I have a finger on the pulse as it relates to the e-com side of things uh, or digital, you know, influ influencer marketing, DDC as well as Amazon. And he has his hands on the retail side of things, right? Mm. Or the overlap that we have, obviously, is like we have, you know, direct, both of us have direct reports, but he is more in tune with, building the culture and kind of being more hands-on there. And that's, you know, as you mentioned, I recognize that's not my biggest area of strength. And mm. I like to, you know, I like to be in my creative genius, right? I like to just create and, and be where I'm, uh, where I'm the best and recognizing, um, as you mentioned, you know, master weaknesses, right? It's my biggest thing when building a company. Mm -hmm. And then how do you go about, okay. So talk to me about the process of like, uh, hiring because you said something earlier you, you said you know i'm very intentional with my hire uh for the now and the future what do you so for the d2c person right let's just take that as an example because the next brand that i launch um i i, I want to create a real d2c brand i want to be like aj when i grow up but um how do you go about and DTC is not my strength uh i played around with facebook ads in the past and before um and you know it, it it's it takes a lot and I, 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 I'm not very good at it. Talk to me about the process of, I guess, just messaging someone on LinkedIn and asking them if they'd be interested in having a conversation. What do you look for? Do you look for experience? Do you look for like, yeah, like what are some things you look for? How did you find this girl? So when I, when I, when I rehire, we're looking for not only skill set, but also kind of the cultural fit, right? So mm -hmm. A uh, couple of core values that we have is like, if it's, if it's to be, it's up to me. So ownership mentality and mm. move fast and break things. So we allow and, and empower people to take risks. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, in this particular process or in general, I would say, you know, it's, it's searching for profiles that kind of fit the bill from a skill set perspective. And honestly, it's, it's reaching out and say, Hey, you know, um, something basically cold, cold, cold calling, right? Like, Hey, saw your profile really, really pre, uh, appreciate everything you've done. Would love to chat about this, this op, this particular opportunity. Um, you know, when, when, when can we, if, if you're interested, let me know, you know, mm -hmm. just simple as that. Right. And obviously part of the pitch is sell your company yeah, and get them excited. Uh, so in this case, I think she was wanting me, she was, she was from an agency wanting me to become a client. Um, oh, okay the call and then you know I, I sold her on on the opportunity right and, and sometimes you just luck out right so it, it, it is one of the harder more difficult roles to find and but it applies to every single executive role it's it just takes a little bit of trial and error got it so once you hire her and I've heard great things about hiring out of agencies actually um because they work really long hours they have so many clients that have to manage and uh, I heard overall, like you can find some pretty good people um, at agencies. Um, but yeah, I was going to sneeze, but I'm good. <laughs> um, so once you pitch her and you offer the position, the, how do you structure these things typically with employees? Do you like to give them uh, equity, like vested, in, uh, vested options to buy into the business? Like how do you, uh, how, yeah, how, w w what's typically your uh, compensation structure to keep these guys ex excited? I mean, de depends on the position, right? So broadly speaking, executive team, yes. Um, compensation includes salary, bonus, and equity, potentially, or salary and equity, right? Mm. Um, so definitely, definitely on, on C-level, you're going to 
I, I like to kind of get them to have the upside within the company, you know, so right. they can the fruits of their labor come to fruition. Right. Once you hire, so she's the CMO essentially, right? If you say she's on the executive. No, no, no. I'm just saying like C-suite in general, okay. right? right. CEO, CMO, salesperson, you know, di- digital person, whatever it may be. So I'm not, I'm not sing- trying to single out her, but I'm yeah. just saying like if the person's worth it. And when I say C-suite, I'm, t- I'm talking about someone that, that's been there, done that, or can provide a skill set that you just don't have. And then you have to look at, you know, what's their, what are they getting paid? If someone's getting paid, say, hypothetically, $200,000 and you don't have 200K, then give them, you know, 100,000 plus equity or 150,000 plus equity, right? You might not be able to get them down that much. Yeah. You can always play with, with the levers based on where they are as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So once you hire the D2C girl, um, then you want to, so then you build out the team to support her. Is that correct? Then she gets to build out her own team. Yep. So Got she, it. right. So how does that process work? Uh, she says, does she literally tell you like, hey, in order for me to do my job, I need X, Y, Z, go find me those people. Or do you give her that power and be like, okay, hey, now go find people. How does that process work? How, do, how does how does building the team underneath her work? Yeah. So, you know, every leader is encouraged to think about what they're going to need six months from now, not only for today, but six months from now um, to be able to execute on where the company is going. So they have high level, they know where we're going to be next year revenue wise and where their channel is going to be or the target, right? Budget. As we, as we kind of get into the budget planning season right now, we know what we're going to do next year, holistically, as well as on channel specific. So to execute on that, on that goals that we have, what do we need? Uh, not only as a, as a team, but for your specific department, right? Right. No, it makes sense. Okay. And then, and then, you know, let's say someone says, yep, I need these three people. Okay. Then we'll get the, you know, they'll work with our HR team. Um, and, and our, our team, uh, our day HR department will kind of, you know, post the jobs, start uh, re- going through the resumes. And when good candidates come through, that's when the hiring managers also get involved. Right. Makes sense. Um, in terms of, I was going to ask you something that I completely forgot. Um, so where, so what's happening right now with Haiki? It's, you've been two years in the business, right? Uh, your product is in, uh, I, I forget the, the retail locations that you said you were in, which, which, uh, retail stores. Uh, we're nationwide in target and we are in the Southwest region of whole foods and also, you know, talking to a lot of other retailers. So we expect that distribution footprint to expand significantly next year and on do you do you know much about the you, you mentioned that your co-ceo is the guy that handles most of the retail side do you kind of uh go in there and try to learn from him uh from the retail aspect of things or you just kind of let him do his own thing i i let him do his own thing and okay. i focus on you know what i what i like doing but you know i do i do learn by proxy or just kind of by observing right yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So I guess I want to ask you, like, what is the plan now for um, for high key? Like, are you guys planning? So once you reach your scale, right? Like, how do you double the size of the company, triple the size, 10x the size? Like, is it just by, I mean, obviously you sell more stuff, but wh- where is the, wh- what's the next step? Like, you just launch more products, you launch more SKUs, you try to get into more retail, you pump up your Facebook ads. Like, how do you, how do you actually take your company from where it is today, double it next year. Yeah. I mean, we, we barely just started, right. Cause real, real scale and especially in, in food and bev, or even in, in a lot of other categories comes in retail, right? So mm-hmm. now that we have uh, the velocity proved out of target, we have a much stronger case to talk to other retailers and convince them to take us. So we're like, you know, on our, in our first inning, so to speak, and we have a lot of runway in terms of online, you know, where obviously we're going to continue to innovate and bring, bring uh, you know, new and unique things to the market. And then when we find kind of the winners online, whether it's on our website, Amazon, mm-hmm. wherever they may be, they're going to go into retail, right? right. So that's kind of a high level strategy. And, and, you know, I have no, no rush to getting rid of this company anytime soon. We're just going to see, you know, how big we can grow this. This is the one that you're going to be like, let's, okay, let's see how big we're going to go. Right. 
Yep, exactly. Because you got five other things on the side where yeah. it's just, it's that's that's a good move, man. I, and and I think like that's definitely where I want to get to eventually is having a nest. Like even if this company knock on wood something bad happens, you know that you got a, like a l- little safety net of of not little, but you got a you got a nest egg where it's like, hey, I'm not gonna be poor tomorrow. Like exactly, I, I, I'm still gonna do very well. So this is just like let's throw this like let's throw this uh this haymaker and let's see like where it lands right and the biggest thing i learned you know on that kind of note is really how big you can scale the company is defined and and limited by your mind Mm -hmm. right like if you believe 10 million is a max i can get it to you're gonna get it to 10 million you're gonna get rid of it Mm -hmm. right but if you if you unlock that potential in your mindset you know sky's the limit so to speak but most people and including myself you know in previous businesses kind of you underestimate uh, i think there's a there's a saying uh, where you overestimate what you can do in, in a year mm. but you totally underestimate what you can do in five or ten years yeah absolutely i, I want to ask you this aj like you have other companies that you're just essentially hey you i i assume you have what the coo ceo for those companies that are running the show Usually there's a management team um, for, for every single one. Um, and just to be clear, obviously I've sold off a couple, two of them. So really I'm active in like maybe four in one way, shape or form. Got it. So how does the reporting, how do you keep a pulse on those businesses? Because I'm sure it's not like, okay, good luck. You guys do your thing because you know what happens when, when, when you do that. It's like things can go down, things can go up, whatever it might be. So I'm sure you still have some sort of a pulse on those companies do you literally just get like a weekly report from the management company here are the numbers here's the pnl here's our sales okay that's good uh how, how, how do you keep them i guess like in check yep so first up have great people beneath you yeah. right especially in the management team if you will and second is i like to get involved um in an important weekly meeting so in one of the companies you know i'm just i'm there for the leadership meetings as an example where you know uh, we kind of do the uh, slimmer version of, of EOS as an example, okay. where we talk about the rocks and it's like, hey, you know, what, where do you guys need help or where, you know, we need X, Y, and Z here, you know, what's, what's preventing us from getting there and so on, right? So it's mm-hmm. just those kind of updates, obviously along, along, along those notes, I do have KPIs as well. So that's mm-hmm. addition. Can you actually share some of the, you don't have to share all of them, but like, what are some, okay. So for, for example, right? Like I, I run my course FBA masterclass and it's doing, you know, seven figures a month right now in sales. And I find the KPIs to be actually very, very like easy for me to understand. For example, like I look at the number of students I sign up, what is our row as, um, what is, you know, um, it's a little bit simpler to keep track the KPIs. Uh, to manage the sales guys, how many calls are they making per day? How many deals are they closing? What is their closing ratio? What is this and that? For a D2C brand, for a physical product brand, can you talk about some of the key metrics uh, to look out for? Uh, obviously, revenue is one of them, but like, what are some of the other? The main thing I care about, you know, as long as we're going the right direction is revenue, right? Like if we set a target, are we hitting it? If yeah. not, then let's go, let's go deeper. Um, trying to think of their obviously within each department, like supply chain is going to have like out of stock rate, um, mm. you know, as a KPI and, and amongst other things. And, but I'll, I'll get the channel breakdown on revenue, whether it's Am- Amazon retail, as well as D2C, and then, you know, weekly meetings with, with those leaders, so to speak, and then kind of going, going in depth or on, on, on those. Right. So as an example, D2C, you know, how much are we, um, acquiring the customers for, you know, what's a, what's a MER and what's the front end acquisition, um, uh, ROAS as an example, mm. right. Mm-hmm. And how's that trending versus last month and so on. And are we on budget? You know, what do we need? Do we need to scale it up? Because we found, we found a, uh, an ad or a funnel that works great. And now, mm. you know, it just, it's time to turn on the engine. So some pretty much along those lines. Got it. Got it. So what, what is like the biggest pain point for you right now as a, a co-CEO of, uh, uh, of high key and managing five, you know, businesses on the side, like what's like, everybody's got shit going on in their lives. Um, what's like something about business that's like, I guess 
keeping you up at night, quote unquote? Honestly, not, not, uh, I know this sounds dumb, but not, <laughs> not much, you know, not business wise. I feel like I finally, you know, we finally hit our stride. So, you know, having great people though around you helps a lot. And I've, I've been very intentional about that with, with in particular with this business and making sure that we bring, you know, the right people with the right skill set that have been there, done that, and that have the right attitude and the right profile and the ownership mentality. And that just makes your life as an entrepreneur so much easier when everyone around you has the same kind of mindset, you know, as you, right? I think the big, some of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make is they, they don't spend the money to hire the right people and mm. the right seats, or, you know, they just delay it too long, right? And I think after the experience of having built so many, I think we've hired over like 300 people. Wow. So, you know, we've, we've learned so much from all of the mistakes that we've made that it just makes the process that much easier and repeatable without burning yourself out. So, you know, now it's just, now honestly, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of other ideas and, you know, how do I, how do I go do the next thing? Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you, what, what do I, you see? What do you see some of the opportunities are right now? Like, let's talk about kind of, let's brainstorm a little bit. <laughs> um, what, what do you see as like some of the opportunities shifting in the D2C space? What are some things that are getting you excited? For example, I'll, I'll, I'll share something with you. Uh, last night I was at a dinner and, um, actually I just want to talk to you about this. We'll talk about this offline actually. Uh, but I was at a dinner and one guy, he owns a VR, AR company, augmented reality and virtual reality. And he showed me this thing. He basically pulled his phone and he's able to basically just put a, a Louis Vuitton bag on the table. Obviously there's no table, there's no Louis Vuitton bag on the table, but I can see the Louis Vuitton bag through this phone, right? And then I can move it, I can, I can do whatever I want to do it. And he also showed me this apartment and he's like, okay, this is the apartment that you're gonna buy. So this is what it looks like. But let's say you don't like this couch. You can actually change this couch to another couch. You don't mm. like the color. You can actually change the color of that couch. You don't like the flooring? No problem. What color do you like? Boom. Do you like this now? I mean, I bought furniture on Wayfair. I bought furniture at Ikea. And the, the, the one thing I wish I can see is like, what does this look like in my room? And that's actually now possible through the technology. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, uh, <laughs> that's sick. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing kind of how many opportunities, you know, you, you, kind of see invented every every day right nowadays um but to your point i mean you know what i'm looking at particularly is just focus on food and beverage because we've got john who's amazing mm, at, oh yeah true products, you know why not why not leverage mm. that and take advantage of it so while i won't reveal the category because mm -hmm. you know it's under uh stealth mode right now uh, yeah. we are we are working on a new new food brand nice are you're not launching like a tequila brand just like all the other uh movie stars are you i wish i wish i think i missed that boat a few years ago <laughs> i feel like i feel like every single person who get rich and famous launched some sort of uh liquor brand like yeah, uh, I mean, obviously ryan reynolds has done extremely yeah. well make it make gregor who else yeah. we got we got we got uh the rock right oh, true there you go yeah, yeah the rock so many people launch liquor brands I'm, I'm actually curious about the liquor business um the margins must be pretty filthy yeah, also extremely, uh, you gotta you gotta grind it out, right? Because there's no online, and uh, so you gotta build it the old-fashioned way, where you gotta wait 12 to 18 months to get that get that shelf life. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Awesome, man. Well, hey, uh, for those that are listening, go and check out High Key. Um, is it H I dash K E Y dot com or H I G H? Oh, high like a, okay. Dot com. Key dot com. Yeah, go check them out. Or sorry, there's no there's no uh, dash. My bad, guys. It's highkey.com. How'd you guys, how'd you, <coughs> excuse me, how'd you think of the name, by the way? I think it had something to do with low key. And we're trying to find like, you know, <laughs> uh, like hip, hip, you know, like modern, like people, young people could relate to. And I, I don't know, someone said low key, opposite of low key became high key. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful site. And I'm sure you paid pretty good money for this. Eh? It would just say like the, the one of the lessons you learned is like when you hire people, whether it's an agency or even your website builder, just pay for it. not the most expensive, but pay the premium version, get it done right. Is that one of the lessons you learned through hiring by any chance or no? 
Yeah, for sure, right? Because if you if you make the wrong hire, like to correct that, course correct that, it's more expensive than getting it right from day one, right? So the way we're building our team is right now is like, hey, this is where we want to be in two years. Who do we need today that has seen that movie several times, right? So we so that can see around the edges for us, and we don't make the same mistakes that a lot of brands have already made, right? So let's learn from other people's wisdom. And let's not, let's not be stupid about it, right? So again, requires paying up money and investing in talent and investing in resources. So to your point, you know, get it right the first time. And, and especially if you believe in it and you want to go all in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, AJ. It's been an absolute pleasure. I know we've been talking something to do with masterminds down the road, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably circle back in uh, 2021. Hopefully 2021 is going to be a better year than 2020. Um, awesome. I, I, one more question, actually. How was COVID for you during, uh, during like, for all your businesses? Did you see a trend? Noticeable trend? Yeah, I think from... from what I what I observed, I mean, it increased because we're still predominantly, you know, online. The majority of our business is online, right? And, and almost all of the businesses. So I think I think COVID helped us a little bit, to be honest. Uh, as I think, I'm pretty sure you noticed that as well a yeah. little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, got the COVID bump. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much, AJ. If uh, anybody want to check you out, get in touch with, well, not get in touch, but uh, I know you're a very busy guy. Where can they follow you? You got an Instagram now, right? No, I don't have Instagram. So LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, you deleted Instagram. Uh, apparently they deleted me for some reason, but yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. Just, you know, type in my name. You'll, you'll find me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, let AJ know. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the very next episode. Thanks a lot, Tom.